Lisa Marie Presley revealed in her memoir, From Here to the Great Unknown, that Michael Jackson told her he was still a virgin when they met. This revelation adds depth to the intriguing history between the two icons, as Presley, who passed away in January 2023, shared these insights through tapes her daughter Riley Keough has now turned into a book set to be released on Tuesday. Presley, then 26, and Jackson, then 35, created a media sensation when they wed in the Dominican Republic on May 26, 1994, a mere 20 days after her divorce from Danny Keough. In her memoir, Presley reminisced about their early conversations, recalling that Jackson confided in her about his romantic history, stating, he told me he was still a virgin. Presley noted that while he had kissed Tatum O'Neill and had a platonic connection with Brooke Shields, nothing had been physically intimate, except for a kiss. She also mentioned that Madonna had expressed interest in him, but that never materialized into anything more. Reflecting on the early days of their relationship, Presley admitted feeling terrified about making the wrong move. When he decided to first kiss me, he just did it. He was instigating everything she wrote. Initially, she had thought they might hold off on physical intimacy until marriage, but Jackson surprised her by declaring, I'm not waiting. She fondly remembered their romance, saying, I was actually so happy. I've never been that happy again. Interestingly, Presley first met Jackson when she was just six years old, as he performed with his brothers in Las Vegas. However, she didn't truly recall their encounter until 1993, when he expressed interest in listening to her demo tape. Their connection was instant Presley felt a sense of loneliness in Jackson that she wanted to alleviate. I just thought that he was lonely and needed a friend. But he was pursuing me, she reflected. Riley Keough, in the memoir, shared a personal touch, mentioning how the family affectionately called Jackson Mimi because her brother struggled to pronounce his name. Riley recalled how Jackson was the only person Lisa Marie didn't ask to sign one of the numerous NDA she kept in the kitchen. Presley described Jackson as an amazing conversationalist, noting a unique quality about him that she felt was remarkable, something she had only experienced with her father, Elvis Presley. I feel really, really lucky that he let me in, she wrote. She continued, explaining how she fell in love with him because of his perceived normalcy. His normal was a side that no one saw, she remarked. Family members, including Jackson's mother and sister Janet, were surprised by how open he was with Presley. In an intriguing dynamic, Presley stated that with others, Jackson would abruptly end conversations if the topic veered into areas he disliked, creating a world where everyone had to agree with him. But with her, there was a different understanding. I could be real without hiding anything she said, emphasizing their unique bond. Riley recounted memories of Jackson living with them in Hidden Hills, Los Angeles, often bringing along a chimpanzee during school runs, humorously clarifying, before you ask, twas not Bubbles Michael would serenade Lisa Marie with songs like Happy Birthday Lisa, from The Simpsons. And he sang Ben to Riley's brother, Benjamin Keough, and you are not alone to Riley. According to the memoir, Jackson sought Lisa Marie's advice when he was accused of molesting Jordan Chandler in 1993. Presley advised him to settle quickly, expressing her conviction that she never witnessed any inappropriate behavior from him. I personally would have killed him if I had, she stated firmly. In an effort to shield her husband, Presley participated in a 1995 interview with Diane Sawyer, which led to a lawsuit filed against her by Chandler's father, Evan Chandler. Presley successfully defended herself in court. She was closely involved with Jackson during the recording of his history album, but by the time it was released in 1995, the pressures surrounding him were becoming evident. I started noticing differences in him, she recalled, hinting at her concerns about his well-being. Lisa Marie sensed drug use in Jackson, drawing parallels to the struggles she witnessed in her father, who died at the young age of 42 in 1977. Presley grew increasingly worried that Jackson was using her as a publicity tool, especially after their infamous kiss at the 1994 MTV Video Music Awards. She noticed he began to withdraw, sometimes disappearing for days and shutting her out emotionally. As she attempted to understand what was happening, a family member suggested that he had developed a pill habit while another urged her to obtain a urine sample for drug testing. At this point, Jackson had feigned a fall and found himself in a New York City hospital, where he had his own anesthesiologist. Presley described their communication as strained, with Jackson getting upset when she inquired about his well-being. She offered to support him through rehabilitation if he had a problem, only to be met with hostility from a doctor who threatened her for asking too many questions. I said, I'm just trying to find out what's going on with my husband, she recounted defiantly. The strain on their relationship culminated when Jackson asked Lisa Marie to return to California without him. She complied, although she wanted him to come along. So I left. I wanted him to come too, but he didn't. I filed for divorce very shortly thereafter, she said. Lisa Marie officially filed for divorce in December 1995, 
and the process was finalized by August 1996. Despite the divorce, Riley revealed that they continued to visit Michael at his renowned home, Neverland, and her mother had an on and off relationship with him. Lisa Marie described their dynamic, saying, We went back and forth for years. He had wanted me to have his children so badly, and I didn't want to. She was acutely aware of Jackson's controlling nature, expressing concerns about his intentions, stating, I knew he would use me and dump me and get me out of the picture. Reflecting on their tumultuous relationship, she told him, You're like a snake, I don't know what you're going to crawl out from under in 1997. Lisa Marie and her children traveled to South Africa to watch Michael perform, which would turn out to be the last time they saw him in concert. Through these revelations, Presley's memoir paints a complex portrait of her relationship with Jackson, filled with love, confusion, and ultimately heartbreak.